This is a mechanical switch, which we usually use to turn on all our light bulbs at home. However, this time we're going to learn how to upgrade this mechanical switch to a more modern one. We're also going to see all the electronics required to convert and modernize this type of switch so that it looks better than ordinary switches. This way, we can also learn a little more about electronics so we can upgrade all our equipment at home. So, without further ado, let's see how to do it. Now, let's see what materials we'll need for this project. First, we're going to need a power supply. In this case, we're going to use the capacitive power supply we made in a previous video. Next, we're going to need a 5 volt or 12 volt relay module. Then, to replace the switch, we're going to use the touch sensor based on the TTP223. All of this will have to go inside this enclosure. However, as you can see, it does not fit. Therefore, we have a problem. To solve the problem, what we are going to do is design a board in which both electronic boards are combined. So, the first thing we need to do is design and assemble the board. After that, we'll explain the electronics. So, let's move on to that. Before assembling the electronic board, let's see which relay is more convenient to use. The 5 volt relay or the 12 volt relay. To do this, we'll measure its DC current consumption. We set the multimeter to DC. First, we energize the 5 volt relay. Pay attention to the screen. And as you can see, we have almost 70 milliamps. Now let's look at the 12 volt relay. As you can see, the consumption is almost 30 milliamps. Therefore, the 12 volt relay has a lower current consumption making it more convenient to use in our project. With that cleared up, let's move on to the next step. Okay, now we're going to explain how the touch sensor based on the TTP223 works. This sensor requires 5 volts to operate and doesn't require our fingers to make contact with its surface. That is, we can place glass on its surface and it will still work. Or we can place rubber on it and it will still work. We can see that it still works. Now we can place the glass on it. and it works the same way. However, the sensor is functioning as if it were a push button. Like this one here. We have to find a way to make it work like a switch. To do that, we're going to make some modifications to the sensor. For the sensor to work as a switch, we will join these two points at B.
Next, we'll change that resistor to a 1 kilom resistor. Either in this format or in SMD format. Very well, we just made the changes. We have the bridge at point B and the resistor we just increased from 120 ohms. Next, we'll explain the reasons why we changed the resistor from 120 ohms to 1 kilo. Now we need to test our sensor. As you can see, it's now working as if it were a switch. Now we can move on to making the board. Okay, our board is ready. Now let's see how it works. Okay, now let's see how our electronic board works. For that, we have these two circuits. This circuit represents the power supply, which is a capacitive source. And as you may remember, a capacitive source is primarily composed of a capacitor, which limits the current for all its components. Therefore, it's very important to manage the consumption of each component. That's why we used a 12-volt relay instead of a 5-volt one. And that's also why we changed the resistance of our sensor, which was previously 120 ohms, generating a current consumption of approximately 20 milliamps. In this situation, with a resistance of 1 kilo ohm, we have a current consumption of approximately 3 milliamps. And here we have the power stage, where we can see that our sensor is connected. This sends a positive signal to the transistor, which will activate the relay and, in turn, turn our light bulb on or off. A light bulb like this. This is how our power supply works. But keep in mind that the board's power consumption is approximately 50 milliamps. Therefore, the power consumption if we use a 220 volt power supply would be 11 watts. However, this power consumption is more than adequate, especially for something homemade. But if you would like me to reduce this consumption to 5 watts, please write it in the comments so we can make an improved version of this board. So, this is how our circuit works. Keep in mind that we have a 10 volt output and a 5 volt output. 5 volts for the sensor. 
and 10 volts for the relay, which can easily operate with those 10 volts. Now let's see how it would be connected to the light bulb and the switch. Very good. Now let's look at the connections on the electronic board. Here, as we can see, we have a light bulb and a power outlet, which would be this one here. From here, we'll need to connect the neutral wire to one of the terminal blocks and the live wire to the other terminal block. From there, we'll connect the live wire to one of our relay's terminal blocks. The other terminal block will be connected to one of the contacts of our light bulb. The other contact of the light bulb will go directly to the neutral wire. In this way, we'll avoid electrocution when handling our light bulb. On the sensor side, we have the 5 volt power supply, GND, and the signal wire. Those would be the connections. Now, let's make the connections and test our board. With all the connections made, let's now test our board. We can see that we have our light bulb connected directly to one of the relay terminals. And the other terminal is connected to the live wire via a red wire. The other light bulb wire is connected directly to neutral. As for the sensor, we can see that it's connected to 5 volts, signal, and GND. Now we're going to connect our board to see how it behaves. We can see that the board has just been energized. Now we touch the touch sensor. We can see that it's working correctly. Now let's see where we would put it on our wall switch. Well, let's look at that part. This is how our smart switch would look. As you can see, it has a pretty good finish since the height is perfect. Especially so we can place it in the box without hitting anything. Here we have to connect the power outlet. And here we have to connect our light bulb. And the sensor is now connected to the green terminal block. Okay, now we need to make the connections to test the operation of our smart switch. Very well guys, to finish we have already mounted our smart switch. Now let's connect it to the power outlet.
As you can see, it works perfectly. Now let's see how our electronic board is. However, don't forget that it has to be exactly as mentioned in the connection diagram. So, it shouldn't be any different, but let's take a look. Here we can see that the power outlet is energized. And from there, we're taking the live wire. The live wire connects to the relay terminal block. The neutral wire also connects directly to the light bulb, as indicated by the connections. And as you can see, it's perfect, and everything fits into the box without any problems. Now we plug it in. And it works great. That way, you can update your wall switches to make them a little more modern. Okay guys, that's how the video ends. Now, don't forget that if you like the video, a like helps the channel a lot. See you in the next video. Bye bye.